If you're watching this video, I assume that you know what a hidden Markov model is. If you don't, check out the link in the description. What we're going to do today is teach you how to figure out the parameters of hidden Markov model given some data. Here are the parameters that we want to estimate. But before we do that, let's refresh your memory about how to estimate a multinomial distribution. One of the biggest problems in estimating a probability distribution is how to avoid a zero estimate of a probability. Hopefully you remember that the way we avoid that is using some smoothing terms. At least that's the simplest way. In this equation, this is represented as an alpha. We sometimes call this a pseudo count because we're adding it to the counts of data that we're seeing even though we didn't actually see the pseudo count thing. When this is equal to 1 it's called Laplace smoothing and to get technical for a second it corresponds to a uniform Dirichlet distribution over all possible multinomial distribution. Because remember estimation is picking out one multinomial distribution given all of the data that you've seen, there are many different ways you could pick a multinomial distribution from your data and a prior is telling you which of those you should favor. A uniform prior says that you shouldn't favor any of them, all of them are equally good. But for the example that will work out in this video, we're going to use a smaller amount of smoothing, point 0.1. So here we have observations x, lyrics from songs on top, x1, x2, x3, and so on. These are our words. The words that we have observed, for example, here come old flat top, is our first sentence and includes x1 through x4. We also have the z's, the actual part of speech sequence down below underneath the x's associated with these sentences. z1, z2, z3, z4. We have a very small data set here, just four sentences in our corpus. This is a toy example. Obviously, if you're working on real data, you would have a much larger number of sentences. Tens or hundreds of thousands. But let's go with this for the time being. First off, let's estimate the initial probability of starting in a particular part of speech. We have four sentences. We have four parts of speech that we observe starting each of our sentences. These are a modifier, a determiner, a conjunction and a verb. So each of these have a count of one. And when we add in the smoothing, we get two different types of outcomes. Things that we saw with an actual count. Anything that we haven't observed gets a frequency of 0.1 because it's zero counts plus 0.1 for our smoothing pseudo count, whatever you want to call it. When we normalize that, we get the following probabilities. This is our initial probability pi. One probability distribution estimated, let's move on. Let's now look at transition probabilities. You'll need to do this for every part of speech, but let's just do it for the verbs. What we do is we look at all the verbs, and then we look at all the things that come after the verbs. We collect those counts and observe the following transitions. Verb goes to modifier, verb goes to conjunction, verb goes to verb, verb goes to pronoun, and verb goes to pronoun again. So we get some counts, we add in our smoothing, we normalize it, and we get the probability estimates that you see here. We do this for every part of speech, but again, we'll just stick with the verbs for this example. We'll have a total of k by k conditional probabilities. What is the probability of going from one part of speech that you were in to the next? And looking again at the verbs, we have three distinct probabilities, not just two, because we saw one transition twice. Okay, one last probability to estimate. We need to estimate the emission probabilities. Again, let's focus on the verbs. We'll take all of the words that we saw, given that they were in a verb state, come, stopped, stared, gotta, get, and love, and also all the words that we didn't see. Since we need a well-defined probability for every word, for A it never appeared in a verb state, so its count is 0.1. We take in the counts of all of the tokens that have this type, add them up, add in the smoothing, normalize it, get a probability estimate that you see here. And that's it! But of course the devil is in the details. I picked the Dirichlet hyperparameter smoothing out of nowhere, but you should of course tune that on your development data. Also, just like in language models, you need to pick your vocabulary carefully. You shouldn't represent every word, there are just too many of them, 
But there are tricks you can do so that even for unknown words, you can get a better idea of the part of speech. So instead of representing every unknown word as a single unk token, you could capture things like capitalization, prefixes, suffixes, etc., to help it land in the right part of speech. Foozing becomes unking, fake ton becomes unk ton, where unk is capitalized, and XSZYQ just goes to unk. This helps you handle out of vocabulary words and hopefully line them up with reasonable parts of speech. But in the end, you've got yourself a hidden Markov model with these parameters. And now you can take a sentence and figure out its part of speech using a tool called Viterbi Decoding, a way of doing inference that we'll talk about in the next video. This is just one video from a course that I'm teaching. If you want to get the whole context, check out the course webpage linked below. There you can find all of the videos in the right order. YouTube likes to show you older videos out of order, homeworks, exercises, and recommended readings. And if you want to help other people find videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe to provide a big gradient to the algorithm.